I'm in my studio today and I'm going to talk about photographs. That is painted from photographs. Now photographs are fine to work from, but don't use them as the final guide to painting. Don't use them as the master. The master is nature. And we've got to learn from nature, but photographs are ideal as a guide. And of course, it means that we've got something to copy from when we can't go outside. So we're still learning and being able to paint. Now, here I've got, I've got a photograph, and when, when you look at it, it looks fine, nothing wrong with it at all, but it's a bit bleak and empty over here. One of the things you can do with a photograph is just cut yourself a mask, uh, like this, out of a piece of paper, and then use the mask to position it over the photograph and look for areas. Also, you get rid of the bad areas as well. I mean, look at that, that looks very uninteresting. Move it around, you've got some reflection there, which is nice. Oh, that's rather nice, coming in there with the boat, yes, but let's try it the other way around. Let's try it this way around. So we'll move it around because after all you can have an upright picture the same as a landscape shape picture. Now, ah, now that's nice. Now you see, that's nice. That would make a very nice painting. Uh, and yet, when you look at it, it's only a small part of the photograph you took. So you haven't got to take or paint the whole of the photograph. Don't be steered into that way thinking, well, I've taken a photograph, that's what I must paint. I mean, this one over here, uh, is in fact a bad photograph, and we all take bad photographs. We're not all David Bailey's. Uh, I take some bad ones anyway. And this one is very dark over here. So again, if you use the mask to move it around, if we come up, now look at that. That's a lovely one. The lovely silhouette of the tree, and the water down here, you've got reflection, or not as much reflection as the light in the water. That's the important bit. And of course, the cows. Now, you can't see much detail in this one, and that's a good thing because it'll stop you fiddling, won't it? But there isn't much detail. You can't see it. So you would paint it very broadly, and it would be very nice to have a go at that painting. Now, there are other things with photographs, and look at this one. This is the ideal one. We can do what a photographer can't do. We can take things out. Now, look at these pylons. I mean, we can take all those out when we paint, so this could be painted, copying from here, and just simply remove those, in other words, don't put them in. So that's rather nice, but be careful that you don't take too many things out of a picture, because if you do, you can be taking the character away from the, from the place that it is. It, it, it's got to have its own character. Don't remove too many things. <clears throat> be very careful with that. Then, of course, we get the sunset. Well, everybody wants to paint a sunset, because when, when you're out there and you see a, a gorgeous sunset, I mean, you really get inspired and you want to paint it or you just want to keep it. And we usually take a photograph, of course, if we've got a camera, because sunsets don't last very long. I mean, they're only there for almost sometimes seconds before it all changes. I mean, take this one, for instance. That's a gorgeous photograph of a sunset. And if we were there, it would be magical. But to put that on canvas, it would be over the top. It would be too much. Apart from anything, there's nothing else in the picture. Because it's a photograph, we accept it. If we were there in real life, we'd accept it. But a picture, it would have something lacking and it would be over the top. So try and steer clear of these very vivid uh, sunsets. <clears throat> now here's one which will give you tremendous enthusiasm, uh, enthusiasm, especially with a camera. When you saw that, you think, oh, look at the way these clouds are all going to the horizon. And you'd photograph it and think, I'm going to paint that when I get home. But the problem with this is they're all going so well into perspective that it looks forced. It doesn't look real. On a photograph it does, of course, because we accept a photograph. Our brain says, well, that's a photograph, it must be real. But a painting, it wouldn't look really right. You'd have to be very careful doing something like that from a photograph. Now, here's a sky. Now, this, this is rather nice, this sky. Very subtle and very gentle. And it's a relatively easy sky to do. So this is the type of sky that you could actually copy from. Uh, and in fact, what you would do, you must have some base, or when I say base, some ground of some description in the bottom when you do a sky to give it scale. Always do that uh, when you're just doing a sky study. I mean, I will perhaps, say, come up to something like that. I don't know, I'm not sure. But I think I'll have a go at painting this. It's, uh, it's rather nice. Right, we're all ready to start on this. Um, what I've done, I've, I've already drawn the 
the clouds in, with pencil by the way. Uh, I'm working on paper that's been primed three times with an acrylic primer. And I've also coloured, put a colour wash over it. Now, I put this colour wash on because it, it does match up with the sort of colour that's on the photograph. I've got this sort of nice feeling of warmth, and so this is going to help. Um, also, I've decided to put some water in. Uh, I still might change my mind, but I don't think so. I think I've, I've looked at it and decided we'll just give that little bit of extra at the bottom when I put the water in. Just a little bit of it there. Right, so I've mixed a Terpsy wash of um, cobalt and crimson. And all I'm going to do is just suggest the clouds in, roughly in their shape, of course. And you can see the way the brush is moving. It's all sort of very free, giving a, a sort of cloud edge and this is very terpsy just I, I i'm looking at the different shapes that are there on the photograph uh, i started inc incidentally with this one because it's the main one now i'm just suggesting this in, and i'm trying to be sort of very nice and light and sort of feathery about this as i am painting clouds don't forget always try to be what you're painting and as I'm painting this, I'm thinking to myself, I'm a cloud, I'm a cloud. It sounds daft, doesn't it? But it isn't. It's amazing because what I'm doing now, I'm looking at this photograph, but not looking, observing, looking very carefully at it. And it's amazing things that I can see in it now that I couldn't see in it when I looked at it just as a photograph um, without any intention of painting it. And I, I'm looking at all these different cloud shapes and everything that's about. And this is what happens uh, when you do paint from a photograph, you will observe a lot more. And uh, this you must do, because of course this is all the most important, or one of the most important parts of painting. We've got to observe and see. Uh, but don't get restricted with the colors of a photograph, because sometimes colors, of course, on a photograph can be quite uh, different to, um, to what nature is. Uh, again, you're using everything as a guide. Now, it doesn't matter if you copy it, if, you, if your brain can't cope with trying to change it um, to more nature's colours. Don't worry. I mean, you'll, you'll get into that the more you paint from nature. But if you start, if you're painting and you are changing colour or your colour is, is different to the photograph, don't worry. It's funny, I'm still half closing my eyes. Remember, I've been saying... Half clo oh, a hair on that. Half close your eyes when you're painting. It's funny, I'm looking at the photograph here at the side. I'm half closing my eyes looking at the photograph. Now, that's still important because it's still taking the middle tones away from the photograph so that I can see it, the darker and lighter tones. So you still do it even then. And I, I'm purposely leaving little bits of this background now near the clouds because I'll be bringing in some light colour there. and it will be nice if it's dry underneath and of course where I don't paint it it will be dry and that's going to help me paint over the top without bringing the bottom colour up. Notice I'm not painting over the trees because if I paint over the trees I'd never get them dark because it would all be wet paint on them. Notice how the brush, I'm, I'm taking the, the weight off it when I come to the edge can you see that? I'm just taking the weight off the brush and it just leaves it all nice and feathery uh, and not hard. Now, this cloud is the, <coughs> the yellowest or the warmest uh, and that's just under the large cloud as you can see so I'm, I'm putting that in now. Um, these, these clouds are reasonably warm but they get darker or shall I say bluer as they get oh there's a bit of warm thunder there uh, they do get bluer as they go down towards the horizon let's just add a bit more there and now these are very warm as well um, they're very similar to the the one above so I'm putting those in now and then we've got all our sort of light coloured ones in. Now remember, I'm not concerned with 
with the foreground all I'm doing is so can you see that how the brush is going up like that into the wet paint and the way I'm playing the brush because I'm not worrying about the brush I'm not trying thinking oh I don't want to spoil the brush you won't spoil a brush um, if you treat it reasonably well. It, you can go against the grain like I'm going, but what does happen, it just makes it appear as though it's the tops of trees, which of course is what we're painting. And so that's rather nice. That, that's a, a, a sort of little bit of technique where the brush is helping. So let's put that in. I'm just one or two little blobs up there just to suggest the tops of trees because these are closer and you've got more shape with these. This isn't particularly the foreground that I would choose for something like this, but um, because it does, it, it's so silhouette, uh, it does give a bit of a sort of, uh, well, let's say a photographic look with it dark like this. But on the other hand, I want something dark there to show you what the sky looks like when you do get some ground in the painting. So that is there that comes out it's got to finish reasonably straight there we've got reflection under there but before i do that i'm just going to put a little bit of water in and i'm using the same colors that i've used for the sky and that's obviously because we get a reflection from the sky um, and that's how we get the colour of the water. So I'm now flicking almost, well, it's really thick paint. Uh, you can see the way it's going on. There's a bit caught round there. There's a lovely bit in there. It's caught along there, a little bit along this edge. I mean, don't overdo this, um, because if you do, it, it's going to look too exaggerated and a weeny bit over the top you've got to be very careful especially when we're doing a sunset i don't know why with sunsets but they can look really over the top now according to that the brightest part of all is here now this is where i've got to be careful because if i do it too much then it will spoil it but i think we're all right with that we'll just do that and a little bit more yellow in the middle of that just to give it a bit more Yes, I think I, if I keep fiddling now, yeah, I mustn't fiddle. I, it, it, I, I do fiddle a lot near the end. I don't know what it is, but what we do need, we need some of that bright under here where we're catching the sun. And just a few little hints of the sun just coming down here and hardly anything like the one on the photograph notice it's um this is really done just very simply anyway that's all we need i'm happy with it now we've painted a little bit of water but I want to paint water in more detail. And one of the ways to paint water is to show reflections. I've got a photograph here, um, and you can see the reflections. There's plenty of reflections in it, but they're a little complicated. And like always with photographs, we've got to simplify it and not necessarily just copy the photograph. So what I want to do is to paint the reflection for you and simplify it from the photograph. Now, in the meantime, I'd painted this uh, area or shall we say the real life area, not the reflection, of the painting or of the photograph, and I'm going to add the reflection in. Now normally I would have painted this picture and put the reflections in with a terpsy wash at the same time as I did the whole of this area. Uh, but if I'd have done that, of course, I couldn't have shown you how to put the reflections in. So here we go, and uh, I'll put the reflections in. Now to start with, I'm working the paint um, very terpsy and very wet with a terpsy wash and i'm looking at the dark areas first and i'm going to paint the dark areas that might be a weeny bit dark but as always we can always modify it as time goes on as we paint the picture and we decide exactly what we want 
Now that dark comes down here. We've got this dark of the side of the building there dropping down. Notice, incidentally, the lines are done almost as though it's oh, da, 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 oh, they're all sort of wobbling and wallowing in water. And that's the way to do it. Just let the brush feel as though it's part of water. Notice I'm I'm letting the this break and break into other colours and leaving bits of the background again which I've toned yellow or yellow ochre. Oh incidentally, talking about colour. How what do you think of this? This this is my uh, painter's smock and I always feel like an artist when I'm wearing this. Now actually I wear this indoors in the studio and then it doesn't matter if you get it all messy. The thing is I usually get more mess on me when I'm out than when I'm inside because that's pretty clean when you think I use it with oil paint. But it's always advisable to have anything that's old to put over the top when you work indoors with oil paint. Now this coming down again as in water all sort of rippling and waving around, lolloping, which it does, that, that lovely sort of that's a lovely sound when, when you're in a boat. It really does. Oh, I know what I must put. I'm starting to drift now because I'm starting to get into this, uh, this water. We've got the reflections from the windows. So we'll put those in. Another window down here. Now, I'm not trying to copy exactly. Remember, you mustn't do that. Oh, we've also got a reflection here of this dark area. Notice how I'm wandering. Now, what it is, it's my eyes that's wandering, and they're looking at various things as I'm painting, and looking at the photograph, and just deciding what to do. And when I see a spot, instead of leaving it and forgetting it, unless, of course, I, uh, I can't break off from what I'm doing, I just sort of go up to it and paint it in. And that means that you're looking at the whole, looking at all the painting as you work, and not just one part, and that we must do. Now there's a dark that runs down there, I don't know where it comes from, I've no idea. We've got the white of the cabin, another, there, there are the cabin windows, and it comes dark again because there's that side of the house, uh, which is a brownie dark, so I'm just going to make it a, a little bit more little bit browner and really what I'm doing I'm analyzing what's there and just taking it in its shape and area now that is a weeny bit too brown it needs to be a bit bluer than that so I'm adding some blue to it and then it comes down we've got the house here at the back of there it runs down here all the way underneath. Now, one thing that is happening that I have seen from this photograph, and that is that the line, the uh, reflection, movement, not, not as much reflection, but the movement on the reflection, the movement on the reflection is going at that angle. It's almost as though there's, the tide is coming up and rippling at that angle. And that means that all my brush strokes uh, to do with real rif ripples want to go in that direction, like that. So I'm, I mustn't forget that when I'm actually putting in some of the lighter colours, which will be going over uh, the darker ones. Right, we've now got that lighter colour. I've just remembered that bit through there. I light a bit in here. And that stops and runs past the house, roof there, and into here. Now, already you can see, by just doing this, that we've got a reflection starting to happen. We can actually see a reflection, because we've now got the true colours and shape for the house. And the house is very predominant, of course, in the painting. Or in, ah, now, there we are. I wasn't looking at the, I was looking at the photograph and wasn't looking at my drawing. Now, that area there has to be lighter. 
So I'm just wiping that out at the moment. That's a reflection of that light bit. So I've wiped that out, and then I can get a real clean colour on there. Now I'm just going to go a weeny bit darker for the other house. We've got a shadow which we mustn't get. Ah, now that's a bit dark, but what I'll do, that's ideal for this shadow through here. That's reflecting that shadow on the side of the houses. Bring it into here a bit. Um, that's going to be light, and that's fine, except it ought to be a little bit lighter, so I'm just adding a little bit more white to that. Now, it could be even whiter still, I think, because that is quite dark, the shadow at the side of it. So, still a bit more white. And these are really subtle colours against each other, but they do make a difference. Now, what I'm doing, I'm simplifying it. At the same time, it might look very complicated. But to simplify it, <clears throat> what I've done, I've looked at the photograph and looked before I actually painted, and this is very, very important, look before you paint and look at the photograph, get used to it and know what you're going to paint. And I analysed the, the water and decided where the areas were of different colour. And this is what I've been doing. I've simplified all that, what might look like a big mass of water with a lot of reflections, well that's exactly what it is. But, if you look at it very carefully, you can break it down into colour areas and colour shapes more than anything because the shapes of course are representing the, the land and that of course is very important to make sure that we get the reflections of what we're seeing on the land. What have we got up here? We're not broken very much up there at all, so I'm just breaking the water by adding this dark across there, running it into there. See, this is where I, I, mustn't, I mustn't diddle with all this, or even fiddle, because if I do, it's, it's not going to keep it simplified for you. So I must, because the more you play with this, the more you can make it look more real. Um, as far as reflections are concerned. See, we've got the light on the sides of these. Well, in the reflection, that actually shows. And that does help. Just look at that. That makes a tremendous amount of difference. Well, I think so. It really does. So I'm just going to put another one down there. It just... It also gives a sparkle to the water you see, and makes it look more three-dimensional. And that is very important. I'll just put another one down here, one there, and one on that one. Now, don't forget, I haven't been painting a picture as a picture. The object was to show you how you could simplify water. First of all, simplifying it from life in the same way that I've just said. Um, you take the shapes of what you see as reflections, and from those shapes, you actually paint and simplify the water, and it makes sense. With this, I've simplified it and could go on further and making more of a painting out of it, making it more detailed. But I, I'd be happy with that, because we've certainly got uh, the reflections in. Uh, I can't see that I've missed anything out obvious after looking at the photograph. Uh, I haven't copied the photograph as such. Don't forget that. I haven't copied it. I've used it as a guide. Well, I hope you've enjoyed um, this session on photographs. It's very interesting working from photographs. But remember, they are not your master. Nature you must work from. But use photographs as a guide and enjoy it. Work from any holiday photographs, anything you like. I'll see you next time.
I love cricket, but I don't play it anymore. I paint it instead. Still, before I paint the picture proper, what I want to do, I want to talk to you about trees and how we can paint trees quite simply. Um, but I'm talking about trees in the middle distance, not close up, not detail work. So let's have a go. Now I'm using the small brush and we start off at the bottom, work upwards into a tree uh, because that's the way that the tree is growing. Incidentally, this is going to be a tree out of leaf. Uh, so although it's a gorgeous day today, this is in fact a tree in the winter. And this is the rigger. And just add the branches. This is only giving you the shape of the tree. I'm not putting any detail in. I'm just getting the shape of the tree, that's all. That's all we need. By the way, while I've got that down, I'm just going to put a little bit of ground in so we can see the ground. And then, of course, we know just where we are. And we need to get some dry brushwork on here uh, just to give us the feeling of all the feathery branches. So here we go. And remember dry brushwork. I've talked to you about it before. It's really where the brush hits and misses. And just get it dry enough. And here we go, just to fill in these areas where the branches could be even dry still. Where the, all these small branches are going over the tree. Now, notice I'm going over the trunk and you'll drag paint away from there. Well, that's fine. I intend to do that because then it gives a feeling that the branches are actually going over, or the small branches are going over the other parts of the trunk and branches that are already there. Now, I've just got it a bit drier, taken a little bit down, and now we're getting the, the shape of the tree. Just take that in a little bit. We'll put a little bit more on the ground. I'm not worried about colour here. All I'm trying to do is just to give you an idea of how we can put the tree in in a very simple way. What I'm doing now, I've gone over to the small brush again just to add now a few more little details. Now, this is where you can get fiddly. Remember, I'm always saying don't get fiddly. You mustn't fiddle with the trouble is when I'm doing a tree like this. I can't stop. I want to keep going. Um, we can put a branch coming out here, a couple of branches through there. That's nice, one going through there. It's gradually building up now. Oh, there is one thing. When you're painting a tree, make sure that you do give it some scale. And that's easy. All we do is put a fence there. I mean, it could be a dog, it could be an animal, a horse, a cow, a sheep or whatever. But it does give it scale. So if we draw them in there, put another one down there, we have got scale to the tree. And we know roughly what size of tree we're looking at. And this isn't a very big one. This is a a little hedgerow tree. Now, I must stop working on this because I could go on forever, gradually build it. Oh, and I do get excited when I climb one of these trees with a brush going up like this. Oh, it really is lovely because you feel that something's happening and you're actually making it work. Now, let's do exactly the same thing. The trunk coming up and its main branches. In other words, what we're doing we're getting the shape, the main shape. And notice how the, the brush is not worried about trying to get an exact shape of branches. It's just giving a feeling of the shape of the tree rather than the branches. Now, I think that's enough for that. Um, remember, there'll be more of these covered up, of course, because of the green that we'll be painting on. Uh, and when I say green, we're talking about leaves. So now let's go and paint some of the leaves on there. Now, I'm starting with light color, a light green. Then I'll be gradually going into, actually it's a bit yellow that, but again, I'm not worried about the color. What I want to do is just let you see the way that you can build it up without getting too fussy. Um, and notice the paint is thin. Uh, a lot of people tend to work oil paint too thick, too thick, especially to start with. 
and we don't want that because it really does get very, very mucky and messy to start with because you're working over it all the time. But it's really exactly the same way as we've just done with that, the, the tree of the, um, without leaves, except of course that we're filling it in more. Let's put a bit of dark round through here where it comes down here, a low branch has come out. That's it. Oh, we must, we must put a little bit of, of grass or ground. Even when you're doing a little thing like this as a, as a sort of exercise, it's still important to give it not only scale, but for you to know exactly what is happening. And I can see what is happening um, by having the ground there. It, it, it starts to make the shape and the form for me. I'm just adding a bit more around there. And just a couple of little branches with the thin rigger brush, which is ideal for doing jobs like this. It really is. Right, it, it's a bit of an odd shape, but uh, it's right, it's fine. Yes, I like it. it. Remember, we're not going into detail. These are just simple ways of doing a middle distance tree. Now, just one last one, and that is when we've got trees sort of on the, not on the horizon, but small trees in the distance on, say, the side of a hill. And we don't, we don't want to t make too much of them. We just sort of want to suggest them. Let's say, put a little higher one there, where they're all in full leaf. Don't worry about the color, I'm not. It's, it's not the color I'm going for. It's just the way we do it. You see how the brush goes all the way round sort of clockwise and anti-clockwise, but the brush is kept straight and the brush is just going round and it's just giving us the shape of the trees. And that's all you need. Let's just put a bit of, a bit of green underneath to show you the, gosh, that's a dark green, isn't it? Let's have a bit lighter green, shall we? See, when you cover that up, just touch the bottoms like that then you're getting, if you like, the edge of the field, and these are sticking over, uh, just over the brow of that field. And that's all you need for something like that. Keep it simple, and keep it simple with the brushwork. Don't go into detail. Well, it's a great game. Uh, in fact, the team that's fielding at the moment is Ottery St Mary, um, where I used to live in Devon. And uh, they were my home team. In fact, uh, I don't live far away from them now, and I often see them. And they're doing very well at the moment. In fact, I shouldn't be watching the match at all. Uh, I should be painting. So I have done something. Let me show you what I've done, uh, and we've really got on with it. Now, you've seen me in previous programmes when I've been doing uh, the drawing in. I've drawn this in with pencil first. Then I've gone over with uh, a Terpsy wash of blue and painted over the pencil. I drew it in pencil because it was reasonably complicated with all the figures and the different things in the painting. I just wanted to be sure that I was reasonably correct. Then after drawing it all in or over the pencil with the Terpsy wash and the sable brush, then I went in with um, a Terpsy wash of colour. And so what I've got, I've now got an underpainting that's got the basic colours in, and at the same time got a lot of tones in. And in fact, one of the, you, you can see an area around here by the pavilion where it's all dark and lovely and juicy. And then under the pavilion here where, where we've got the windows, they're all dark, and these are dark areas. And that's important to get them in first because then I will work from there um, with my tones. And you can see I've left the cricketers in white. I shall start, as usual, going over the top, working from the left, to the right of the picture, just putting in the sky. Now, the beauty of it, uh, where it misses and doesn't fill the canvas as I... Oh, incidentally, that's another thing. I'm working on canvas. It's posh today. 
uh, working on canvas. It's, uh, it's a lovely feeling as well. I've been working a lot on board and paper over the other programs, but now I'm on canvas, it, uh, it gives it a different feeling, does canvas. It's a lovely sort of grit to it. It's really nice. Now, this is quite dry, this paint. Uh, it's almost a dry brush. I'm just going into the sky with the leaves, just to give a feeling that the leaves are overhanging. There's a nice dark area there. I'll leave that for a minute and come back to that. But we've got the sun on this, this side at the moment. Of course, as usual, we're going to... The sun will change, and we always, when working outside, have problems with the sun. But, as I said before, what you must do is decide on which way you're going to paint it when, you're, when you start the drawing, and then you've got to keep like that during the painting. Ah, that's, that's not bad, that's not bad. That's nice and dark, and it's still warm, not too cold. And it's nice, lovely at the side of the flag, because the flagpole is white, and this means that we're going to get light against dark, and that's going to help a lot when we come to painting the flagpole, because it will be very light against... Oh, that's a lovely dark, that. And then just coming underneath here with those, that's really getting dark under there. Now, you see how it helps having this dark underneath already uh, and this colour, because I'm really only dragging this on at the moment. I'm not putting thick paint on. I don't need it yet. Um, I, all I'm doing is, is getting even more into the tonal work of the trees. Now, I must put in this background of hills. And, in fact, it goes through there. I mustn't forget that. I'll put that in now. Could be a weeny bit bluer, I think. I've just added a little bit more in. Yes, that's not bad. A little bit lighter as well. Um, now, let me see. A little bit there. Comes along. Just lighten that up fractionally through there. Right, that's it. That's Now we're getting progression uh, into the distance. Now, these have got to be dark just down here. I'll leave that for a while. I'm just looking. Always remember, always look at the painting. Keep looking at it, keep studying it. Look at the scene and decide what needs to be done. While I'm having a break, I thought I'd show you how to paint figures. Not, not portraits, not complicated figures, but simple figures, the way that would, we would see them in a landscape. In fact, uh, in a simple way, the way I'm going to be painting the, uh, the cricketers themselves. So, here we go. Now, first of all, a very simple thing to remember, uh, and that is that the brush stroke itself can give us the direction that the person is inclined. In other words, that brush stroke there is showing that a, a figure's head, these are heads by the way, sorry about that, heads. Um, this figure is looking down, that one is looking straight ahead, and that one is looking down there. That's just done with a brush stroke. Now, I, let's put some hair on, because again, with the hair, we can help to show what we want to do. Now, the hair is coming down that way, so the figure is looking down, and it's obvious because the hair goes to the back. Now, if we take this figure, we want hair in front, and he is looking in front, looking towards me. Now, this one over here, if we put the hair on that side, then the figure is looking in that direction. So it's very simple, and it's obvious, but these are things we remember. With just a brush stroke, we can make something happen with a person. Now, let's change brushes and 
put, let's just put a person's head there and another one here. And this time we'll use, uh, for, the, for this first person, I, I want to use white. Now, the white is going to show against the dark. And notice I'm just dragging it down. The arms go down there somewhere. And then onto a dark colour. And I'm letting it happen. Legs are just... Actually, he's, if you like, walking towards us. I think we ought to put a bit of, bit of hair on him. That's it. He's coming towards us. Perhaps he's carrying a briefcase or, a, or something. Might even be my painting kit, my pochard box. And here he comes, walking down here. Now, the person at the side, I'm going to do dark. Let's put some hair on. Now, he is looking at this person. He's turned his head. He's coming down. Notice how simple it is. I'm just suggesting, literally, the shapes of the body and the way it's falling. An arm down here and a leg coming down there. Now, they are walking towards us. Done very, very simply, just with a brush stroke. Now, one thing, perhaps he could have wider shoulders, but it doesn't matter, he's a person with thin shoulders. Don't worry too much about uh, how the people look, whether they're fat or thin, but of course, the beauty of it is you can make people exactly how you want. Now, here's someone that is walking away from us in silhouette. Now, the reason, or one of the things that helps to make him walking away is the fact that his head, I've taken his shoulders over the head like that, which shows that the head is behind the shoulders and therefore he's walking away. Uh, now, there's one thing that I haven't done, and you might have noticed, yes, I haven't put feet on. Now, don't put feet on, because when you put them on, they do, believe me, they do look very strange. Let, let's put them on this chap here, uh, and you'll see what it's like. So we put one on there, and one on there, one on there, and one on there. And they look like Charlie Chaplin's, don't they? Don't put feet on. Let, let it be a suggestion, and it will look right. Unless, of course, they're very close up, where naturally you would put feet on. Now, uh, looking in the front of the pavilion, um, that's a weeny bit blue still because of the underpainting. And I just would like to just make it a weeny bit... Um, it's difficult to say. I don't mean black because it really isn't black, but a, a blacker colour than the blue. And I'm going to just add that in here. I've got the people to add, but this must be put in first. So I'm just, I'm not doing it everywhere. If you notice, I'm sort of just putting a fiddle here and a fiddle there. Now, these fiddles are permitted. It's a fiddly job, this bit. So I'm allowing myself quite a bit of fiddle on this. Um, remember, I've been telling you all the programmes, don't fiddle. You mustn't fiddle, but this is a fiddly job. Isn't it funny? Now, this window was dark when I started, and now there's some light areas being caught on there through the sun. Um, this, the wicket keeper, all crouched down, is in shadow under there. Uh, his pads are up there. I'll put the other pad and his leg in shadow with the shadow paint that I've got. Incidentally, I've mixed this white with... Oh, I ought to really put his head first. Let, let me just put his head. I'm going to do that with a um, bit of dark. It's just because I want to paint the... I want to paint his collar. That's it. I want to paint his collar over the head when I paint the 
when I paint in the shirt. So here we go. And then he look, you see that? The weight just goes over out there. And it looks as though he's bending down or his head is down. Now, his trousers, apart from this one over here, this side of his trousers are in shadow. So I'll put that on in a minute. There was just a little bit of light there. Uh, he was shadow under there. There was a bit of light coming down this side of his pads. So we'll put that in shadow. In fact, this, this one had a hat on, uh, one of the white caps, not a hat, a white cap. So it looks funny, doesn't it? But uh, it'll look OK. I'll put a bit of dark under there just to, just to help it. Actually, there might have been a bit, bit more flesh just under there. Just stick it in a little bit there. And then let's carry on with this outfielder over here, patiently waiting on the boundary. He had a hat on. Oh, that looks all right, doesn't it? Got his hat on there. Actually, he almost looks as though he's looking over there. Well, in fact, what he was doing is watching the bowler as the ball came down. So he's all right. He's in a good position. Then his legs. Yeah, he just needs, I think, a weeny bit more around there. Mind you, this is where you haven't got to fiddle, because we're not doing these, as I said earlier, we're not doing them as portraits. Um, we're just suggesting the figures. The brush strokes are horizontal, and this is because the shadows are in perspective on the ground, and this stroke is keeping them looking as though they're flat on the ground. I'm not trying to do little blades of grass. Mind you, there aren't many because the field is cut short, obviously. But it's just adding the sort of finishing touch. It also gives it that sunny look, which is rather nice. There's one or two that are coming out here. Right, I think that's all we need for the shadows. I just want to put one or two more branches in. Of course, these branches now are actually light, not dark. As the sun has changed round, they've moved, or the, uh, the sun has moved, and, and the light has changed completely. But this we've got to be prepared for when we're painting outside. And the other thing about painting outside don't worry too much about getting what you might call a finish painting. Because painting outside is really, it's, it's a lesson. We're learning, we're observing, we're learning about nature. I could go on for ages painting around here um, and adding bits here and adding bits there, um, doing something more to the figures, more to the trees, to like I've just added to the branches and so on. I could keep going. But it doesn't matter. You finish when you're, you feel happy and you've enjoyed it. You must enjoy it because that's what it's all about, enjoyment. And I've had a lovely day. And I'm, I'm happy with the painting. As I say, I could keep going, but I'm not going to bother. I, I'm happy with it. Well, that's the end of the series. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have because, believe me, I thoroughly enjoyed making the series. And don't forget you've got to practice. You must Practice and practice, observe, see things, see nature, and you'll get there. Believe me, it's, it's easier than you think. Why don't you have a go? I'll see you again.
Dale Rowney products throughout this program.